more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the practical skills that you'll need to know for your surgery rotation. And this is going to be a little bit different from other videos where I talk more about knowledge and about different approaches to different clinical diagnoses. These are more of skills that you are going to be expected to know for your rotation, specifically for your surgery rotation, but you will never explicitly be taught how to do. So these are things that can help you build trust among your peers, among your residents and, and attendings, so that when you can do these things well, well, and you'll be expected to do these well, it will kind of be a test for you to be allowed to do other procedures, whether it be in the OR or whether it be outside of the OR. Um, it will definitely help build that trust for you. So the first thing of those skills, I think, is going to be knot tying. It's a very simple skill, but it's something that is going to be something that's going to be expected out of everybody. And you're never going to be explicitly taught how to do it, but I think it's a very important skill to have because it's probably the first encounter or one of the first encounters you'll have with the patient in the OR. So I think that the best place to do it is really just practice. I think it's very important to practice. So always have it tied at the thread of your scrub bottoms. I mean, the loop of your bottoms where you kind of tie your pants up, you can attach a little yarn or a piece of sewing thread or even old suture and just kind of practice with that. I think it's good because it gives you an opportunity to practice kind of when you're doing nothing and just standing there, but it also shows people that you care, it shows people that you're serious. I've definitely gotten comments myself when I was a med student of somebody who is trying, is someone who wants to do more and try to practice with something as simple as not tying. I've definitely had comments on those. And the next thing is, how do you get better at it? Well, I think the most important thing is practice, but not only practice in that you're practicing all the time, but you're also practicing variety. So I think very important is left and right-handed tying is that far too often, if you're right-handed, you'll only practice right-handed tying and you'll only practice uh, likely two-handed tying, but you have to practice both left hand and right hand and also one-handed and two-handed tying because chances are there's going to be a situation when you may not be able to tie something because it's going to be starting off with your left hand rather than your right hand or you're going to be in a situation when the attending may ask you oh can you do a one-handed knot and you just say oh no I don't know how to do that and so that's not going to give a good impression so always practice both left and right handed and one and two handed knots but also practice with simulated situations so if you've ever actually been in the OR and you tried to tie a knot you'll realize that the very first time that you do it with gloves on and especially when you have double gloves on it's much more difficult for some reason your dexterity is much more often. It doesn't look or doesn't feel the same. And in addition to that, add on wetness to your gloves, then it's going to be completely a different ball game. And this is actually going to be the reality is your gloves are not going to be dry. Um, you're also not going to be tying barehanded. So you want to practice in these scenarios. Obviously, you can't do that while you're walking around on your scrubs, but you can do that at home. So, so practice at home with gloves, make them a little bit damp and try to get better at it. Try to do most of your skills with gloves on and maybe even make it a little bit wet just so it's more difficult for you so that when the opportunity presents itself, you'll be ready for that. Next thing is going to be scrubbing in. I think that this is something, it's not necessarily a skill, but it's something that you need to know how to do before you go into the OR. I think if you're a first or second year, the best advice I would give, even if you're not trying to go into surgery, go in as early as possible. Try to go into the OR as early as possible, shadow, try to scrub in, try to learn as much as you can and be familiar with all these skills as early as you can so that when you're actually on your rotation, when people are grading you and you really can't use the excuse that this is my first time, then it'll it's much more comfortable. It's, it helps you be more comfortable, helps you be more confident when you're actually in the OR and when it's real. And so I think that definitely watch as many videos as you can. Try to learn how to scrub in if you haven't done it before, especially if you're a, a rising third year. Uh, but don't be afraid to ask. And this goes with anything, really. If it's your first time, it's much better to tell somebody that it's your first time and learn the correct way the very first time rather than to do something wrong and to have lied about it and said that you've never done it before and then you, you get called out it later on. So I think that's very important is that for sure try to watch as many videos as you can. Try to know it because even if you haven't done it before, if you've seen it enough times, you'll be comfortable enough to do these things on your own, even if you haven't physically done it. And I don't think you even need someone to show you. But if you don't feel comfortable, you haven't done it before, definitely ask someone. It's always better to ask than to just try to do something and do it incorrectly. 
Next thing is going to be Foley placement. So this is often a thing that you can be very helpful in is because in the beginning of a case when you're just starting off or when everybody's just starting off of the case, there's a lot of things going on. All the nurses, all the scrub techs, everybody's very busy doing something. This is one thing that nobody really wants to do, but it's something that you can be helpful and do. If they see you can do it once the first time, then after that, they'll let you just do it on your own. And it all depends on the institution, but that's kind of how I've generally felt that um, it's worked. And this is just a good way for you to get your hands onto something um, and to start doing something. And this is probably going to be, unfortunately, the first and potentially only actual procedure that you'll get to do oftentimes in the OR. But it's a good thing to just test your skills to, to gain that confidence and so you can build up for, for other tasks that you'll be um, allowed to do. So definitely watch videos. I would say, honestly, the best tip would be in your first or your second year when you're shadowing, ask somebody. Ask somebody who you feel comfortable comfortable asking, can you show me how to put in a Foley? I would love to learn how to do it. Or even as a third year early on, try to just be as engaged and as eager to do something as possible. I think the biggest thing, it's, there's nothing difficult about it. There's nothing technically difficult about it. It's pretty much about sterility. That's probably the hardest thing I would say is about how do you keep one hand sterile? How do you have the right technique in order to um, clean everything and how to not make everything uh, contaminated is, is probably the most important thing. But always be eager. Even if you've put in a ton of these, it's a good way to just be helpful. So always be eager to help out with this because it's not just about proving that you can do something. It's also trying to be helpful. I think you should be generally helpful during every rotation. And this is one of those ways that you can do that. So I think the next thing is going to be suture cutting. I think that this is a, a good skill that you'll need to know just because I think if you've ever been in the OR, you've seen people who potentially are better and worse at other things. And this is one way that they'll test you before you can even suture something. They'll see if you can cut something first. And I think that this is important because it's very easy to just not do these things right, even though it may seem so simple. So the first thing is, how do you hold your scissors? Well, one is you put your thumb and your fourth finger into the holes and you use your second finger to support the scissor. Oftentimes you'll see people putting the thumb in here and their index finger in the second hole, just like you would hold normal scissors. And, and that's not necessarily the, the best way to do it. Make sure you stabilize your hand. I think more importantly than how you cut the scissors or how you hold this is these points right here. And this goes with everything is that far too many times people just don't get permission. They just start doing things and they just start doing things, start cutting things. And that's when they get in trouble. That's when they start getting yelled at where they'll do something too fast. They'll do something without actually getting explicit instructions on what they want done. And this is when people get yelled at. And this is kind of when you will kind of lose your task of, of being the cutter. Unfortunately, that is a task that oftentimes medical students will be given. So I think that no matter what, just make sure you're doing it right, but more importantly, make sure you get permission to do whatever it is that you're doing. After that is when you're actually going to be suturing. And it's a very common task for med students. The one thing I'll say is that this is something that everybody will expect you to know, but nobody will ever teach you how to do it. And nobody is going to take really take the time to teach you how to do it. If you don't know how to do it in the OR, don't expect anybody to teach you or walk you through it. Unless you have a very nice surgeon, chances are they're really not going to take the time to do it because it's going to, it's the time when everybody's closing. You're going to be suturing things when things are closing up and everybody's going to be rushing you, whether it be the nurse, the scrub tech, or the attending, everyone wants to get out of there. So this is going to be something that all of your classmates are going to somehow be experts in it. I don't know how, but they, all of my classmates were experts in it. And I was kind of left behind because I wasn't as good at it. And it's just because I never really had the experience of being taught it and this is something you just have to do on your own practice as much as possible on a banana on a chicken in simulation labs or also get your own kit so you can practice on your own and just practice all the different types of suturing and make sure you're familiar with all the different names of them so that when they say can you put in a vertical mattress or can you put in the other types of sutures you'll be able to do it and you also know what they're referring to because the last thing you want is you know how to do something but it's just you weren't sure what the name was so this is a very common task that is it's kind of, if anything, this is probably more of the later tasks that you'll be allowed to do. Uh, I would say the more quote unquote advanced tasks that you'll be allowed to do, not because it's difficult, but just because this is the time when really they don't want to do much teaching at this point. They're kind of done with the, the procedure. 
Number six is going to be what not to do. I think it's important to know, to be good at certain things and to know what to do in certain situations. But more importantly, you're going to be remembered if you do something wrong. Unfortunately, there's going to be very few times when if you do something very well or you do something right, nobody really will remember you for that. But they will definitely remember you if you do something incorrectly. So anything in blue, don't touch it if you're not um, scrubbed in. Always watch your back is important because far too many times you'll bump into the scrub tech stuff with your back and everybody will get mad at you. Um, know where to rest your hands I think is very important because if you watch any of the other attendings, if you watch any of the other residents, especially the older residents, they're not going to ever put their hands in the right way that you should be putting them. They're going to be putting them under their armpit. They're going to be just hanging them down. Always keep them above your waist. Uh, essentially just keep them on the table as best as possible. And I think this is important because and it all depends on your relationship with your scrub tech and the relationship with kind of the team in general is in general really don't touch the scrub tech stuff unless they ask you to i think it's very common that these scrub techs are they have things in a very regimen way they have things in a very organized way if they don't know where certain tools are then they're gonna get mad they're gonna be flustered and if you are the one that's taking stuff off their their trays taking stuff off their table because you want to be helpful and i think it's good to be helpful but i think in this situation sometimes it's not great to be helpful in that scenario because you oftentimes will piss off the scrub tech. So definitely only touch it if you really are given permission to or the scrub tech's hands are just completely tied up. And always be calm and don't make abrupt movements. I think this goes with anything in the OR is that you never want to be that spastic person that makes these very aggressive movements or these very quick movements because chances are something's going to get messed up or you're going to scare someone or uh, nobody really likes these fast movements or these twitchy type movements or people. So the last thing that I'm going to be talking about is anatomy. And I think that is very important to talk about anatomy because it's a very practical skill that is, is not necessarily something that anybody ever teaches you how to do. I think it's very different from anatomy when you're in anatomy lab where you're trying to learn every single aspect of anatomy. You should obviously know all the organs, uh, but I'm saying even more like every single nerve, every single muscle, everything of the human body in anatomy lab. But that's not necessarily as important when you're in the OR. What you need to know is specific things. You need to know what specifically is going to be affected in this particular case. What particular structures are going to be around the things that you're going to be dealing with in that particular case. Do you need to know brain anatomy when you're working on the abdomen and you're in GI? Probably not. Also, if you're on vascular surgery, you should know all the vascular anatomy. When you're on ortho, you should know all the bone anatomy. When you're on opto and so on and so forth, you should know those subspecialty anatomies. And when you're on trauma, know all the common diseases and procedures. But how do you go about doing all of that? Because if you were just to go through netters and just look up everything, how do you know what's important? I think for me, what I found to be the most important was having some type of textbook. The one that I used, and this was a surgical textbook, was Schwartz. It really just taught you what was important for that particular case case. They broke everything up by case, not by system. So it wasn't just all of GI. It was a specific procedure that you wanted to do. You can look that up and you can find out how exactly was the procedure done? What were the, going to be the complications postoperatively? What do we think about preoperatively? Who gets this procedure? And what are the anatomy of the case? What anatomical structures may we um, damage? And what anatomical structures should we be knowledgeable of? Because these are going to be things that we're going to be pimped on. So I think that that for me was extremely important because if you just were to go to some type of general like up to date or Wikipedia or just go through net I don't think that would be as high yield. It would definitely give you all the information you needed to get. But for those that don't have the greatest memories like myself, I just wanted to know what was most important for that particular procedure. And I thought this was a great way to do that. It walked me through the entire case. It gave me all the very specific details that I needed. So I think that was pretty important for me. So I think that for all of these, these are just skills that I think that are a little bit different. They're a little bit different from what you would generally have learned going into your internal medicine or going into your pediatrics rotation. It's just a little bit of a different skill set. You still need to know all of those types of things, still need to know a lot of knowledge, but you also have have to have a lot of practical skills as well and have to be good with um, your hands and just kind of generally uh, what are the social constructs of the OR. If there's anything else that you can think of that you thought was particularly helpful, definitely let me know down in the comments below. But hopefully this helped. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.